Rango. Dude, we're getting raided. Wait, seriously? Yeah, he's already broken our bags. Can you jump on? Okay, here's the thing, dude. I can't actually log on right now. I'm like out of my wife at the moment and I'm like on a mountain. Bullshit, man. I don't believe you. Do you not hear the mic? You know what? It's fine. I've got an Asus laptop in the car. I'll log on and save your base. Our base. Whatever. Why, thank you, Mr. Mountain Man. I appreciate you helping us. Yeah, screw you. Luckily, though, I had a very powerful weapon. I started logging in. I could hear the radio trying to pick through the wall. But unfortunately, I'm stuck in the furnace room. And there's nothing here but sulfur and charcoal. And some odd scraps in a box. I equipped the grenade launcher. Fit my finest armor. I only have one shot at this. And it's time to save my base. You see, I was actually miles away from my house. I was in fact on a romantic date with my wife. I didn't lie when I said I was on a mountain. But fortunately for Durango, I had the new Asus Severus M16 laptop with me. It all started about last week when Asus reached out to me and they said, Hey, we want you to make a video for us. I said, sorry bros, I'm a gamer, not a hardware reviewer. They said, it's fine, we like your style. I warned them and said if I had to review a laptop for you guys, I'm going to be super strict and I'm not going to hold back. They said good, we love honesty. One final attempt to get them off my back, I said, sorry, I don't accept payments for doing hardware reviews. They said it's fine, we won't pay you. But all memes aside, I've done work for Asus before, I really enjoy their screens and I thought hey, why not try and do a laptop review for them. The Zephyrus M16 sounds good on paper. It's absolutely loaded with power, it's subtle, it's quiet, it's plain. It's right up my alley, and I can't wait to complain about this thing. You know, I really wanted to find an issue with this laptop. I thought to myself, if, if Asus sends me a laptop, and I just start saying positive things the whole time about a device, that the person watching it would think, oh shit, he's selling out. He's obviously being untruthful. And I feel like if I find bad things about a product, it at least gives me like an air of genuine authenticity. It allows a viewer to trust me because um, I have bad things to say versus only good things. Sometimes you get given a device and it is gosh darn near perfect. And unfortunately, these are one of these situations. For the last two years, I've been using thin and light laptops. This is classified as a thin and light because it is, you know, thin. <laughs> In fact, I currently use a thin and light gaming laptop as my main driver. Thin and light gaming laptops aren't without their problems though. They are very thin, so thermally they struggle. They overheat quite significantly. Smaller space, worse thermals, typically means underpowered CPU so that it doesn't overheat. The laptop that I currently use right now, for example, is very noisy because the fans have to try and keep it cool and the CPU runs at a constant 95 degrees. Now, it's fine, laptops are designed to run hot. The problem is, is that you get something called thermal throttling. Thermal throttling is a problem because obviously once your CPU gets too hot, it throttles the CPU, the CPU performs less, you end up getting less frames. And that is my biggest gripe with thin and light gaming laptops is the fact that they're overheat. My one currently runs on 95 degrees. It is always hot, so I have the fans cranked very loud at all times. This one just, it blows the thermals out of the water. Now I'm going to show you obviously some tests that I ran earlier. Okay, before we do some testing, just a couple of notes I'd like to mention. This laptop runs at a native resolution of 2560 by 1600, making the screen resolution taller and not narrower. You see, with most common resolutions like 1920 by 1080 or 2560 by 1440p, they run a ratio of 16 by 9. The M12 Zephyrus runs a 2560 by 1600, making it a 16 by 10 ratio, but more on that later. Next, I've added some vitals on the top left of the screen. I'm going to show the GPU and CPU temperatures, the GPU and CPU workload, the system's memory usage, as well as the frames per second. And finally, all the games I'm about to test, I test in native resolution, so 2560 by 1600, hence the black bars on the side. And I set all the graphics to ultra, and if there's ray tracing available, I activated that too. 
And first up we have Apex Legends. Now you can see I've overlaid the laptop screen on top of the game footage so that you can understand how the black bars work. Of course on my screen I don't see the black bars because my screen is taller than your screen, giving me a larger field of view. I do have the ability to change it to 2560 by 1440 to fill up those black bars, but then I will lose some screen space on the top and bottom. Even though that 8GB RTX 3070 was working very hard, the temperatures didn't get very hot. The CPU was basically idling along with very minimal usage and the temperatures very seldomly went over 80. Incredibly impressive considering that when I'm browsing the internet on my laptop, the CPU is over 90. The fast paced nature of Apex Legends felt incredibly smooth and it was such a joy to play. I usually play Apex on a 32 inch monitor and the fact that I played this on a 16 inch monitor and didn't do too badly is perhaps a testament to that fluidity. It also felt quite strange to play in ultra graphics for a change because on my laptop I have to run everything on lowest just to get 60 frames per second. Next up we have Rust and like I said in the previous video we're going to turn all the graphics up to as max as possible and my fingers are crossed because Rust is notoriously difficult to run. I picked the local server with a low ping and a decent population count, loaded in, and even though the FPS was quite low, I was quite staggered at how incredibly smooth it was. Everything seemed sharper, everything seemed more clear, and it felt very unusual to see Rust in this condition. I myself struggled to get Rust to run properly, so it was pretty darn amazing. Now Rust is notorious for having incredibly high CPU usage and it very seldomly works hard on the graphics card. I'm quite pleased to report that the CPU didn't catch fire and that it stayed under 90. I hold judgment until we get to Bandit Camp because that place is famous for making CPUs catch on fire. Seeing the grass flow and the weather and all the environmental effects and the lighting in ultra graphics at a decent frame rate was definitely unusual. It looked amazing and honestly sometimes I can't even believe that this is an 8 year old game. Holy heck. Unsurprisingly at Bandit Camp the frames dipped very low but it was still smooth enough to play and it was smooth enough to enjoy. Again this is very unusual for me to see things this clearly and I'm certainly not complaining. One thing I did notice about Rust on the M16 is that everything seemed sharper. I don't know if it's the resolution, I don't know if it's the graphics card that is performing better, but compared to my 2080 laptop GPU, compared to this 3070 GPU, the game seems clearer. I mean, if I crank my graphics to full, sure, my frames will drop really low, but I don't remember my game or my game world looking this sharp and this clear. Everything looks a little bit blurry, on my laptop at least, but on this playthrough of Rust, everything seems crystal clear and sharp, and it's actually quite unusual. I'm very impressed with what I'm seeing. Another test, which I'm literally just confirming as I'm looking at that lowered frames per second counter, is going next to large structures. It seems like this laptop is not immune from the poorly optimized but slightly aging Rust. Unfortunately, the frames are dipping quite low, and I can actually see some jaggedness on my screen now, so that is a bit of a bummer. Kill me, pussy. Fuck you. You're just gonna watch me die? You're gonna watch this? Disgusting. I'm, I, I am back. I'm back, bitch. I'm better than ever. Can you give me, like, some cloth now? But, I, I mean, but, 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 can you give me some cloth if I come back again? <laughs> okay, okay, buddy. Next, for Modern Warfare 2019, I put NVIDIA DLSS on Ultra Performance and I activated ray tracing. Everything else on Ultra. Running a solid 110 to 120 FPS on that large resolution looked incredible on screen. Even though the graphics are starting to look maybe slightly dated, I was staggered with the way the game performed. Cyberpunk in Ultra with ray tracing on was a massive disappointment. Even though the game felt relatively smooth, it did feel sluggish. The frames didn't get jaggedy like in Rust, but it did feel slower. And judging by that workload on the 3070 GPU, I can imagine it is struggling along quite a lot. I don't think it has to do with the fact that Cyberpunk isn't optimized. I do remember playing Cyberpunk recent on an ASUS desktop machine with an 11900K and a 3080 GPU, and I was getting about 105, 110 FPS on Ultra with ray tracing activated. However, once I deactivate ray tracing, I get a much smoother experience. Still not massive frames per second, but I don't care about that nurture. All I care about is how does the game feel on my eyes, and this felt perfectly smooth to me. Every time I play Cyberpunk, I literally get blown away by how cool it is. Gross. And finally, a potential esports title. 
no surprises here rocket league ran like an absolute dream i got like 10,000 fps not really but a lot of fps it was predictably smooth and obviously it didn't even pick up but then again you can run rocket league on a pocket calculator so i don't know if that is a flex or expected the main thing to take away is that i'm quite shocked by the fact that on all the games i played the cpu and gpu temperatures were extremely cool i can imagine it's owing to the fact that the design of the laptop is incredible the laptop screen and hinge combo actually allows it to lift itself off the table once you open the screen up, allowing much more air to flow in through the bottom and sides, and the fact that the GPU and CPU are attached to the heatsink via liquid metal. A very cool touch. Let's talk features that I absolutely love. The CPU, the i9, it is an 8 core. It is ridiculous. It is ridiculously fast. It runs so fast and so cool that it is probably what makes this machine for me but not only that like if i look at the screen itself i mean look at the viewing angle about year you start getting perfect viewing angles and it is such an extremely color accurate monitor i feel like this is not only going to be a gaming machine i feel like it's going to be an editor's gaming machine it's got the rtx 3070 it's got the i9 8 core it's got 32 gigs of ram it has a 2 terabyte m.2 ssd running gen 4 thanks to that 11th gen cpu the boot time is staggering. I mean, this is cold boot. Uh, it, it's, it's got the nicest little touches. It starts up so fast and, that was cool. And it, I mean, if I need to use my laptop, I need five seconds and then boom, I'm on desktop. Um, it, it's staggeringly fast. The screen, like I mentioned, is obviously very bright and very color accurate and very perfect. But if you notice the screen's bezel, it's really thin. It runs at 2560. No, it, it runs at 2560 by 1600. It actually runs a 16 by 10, not a 16 by 9. Most laptops run a 16 by 9 and they have this big bezel at the bottom that covers up most of the screen. A screen like this uses all of the screen space. The screen itself runs at 165 hertz. However, if you are like me and you're going to use it as your gaming PC, you're obviously going to have it plugged into a giant screen. For external screens, you have two USB type C's and they accept display ports. They can run obviously as fast as you want them to. There is no speed limitation on that. I mean, even the sound is just so upsettingly good. Uh, let me, actually, you know what? Let me play you a song, okay? Now I've got my microphone over here. Just listen to like the speakers on this thing. It's absolutely staggering. Little Nas Panini. The fuck? One, two, breathe. Three, Getting shift advert. So no, I'm not faking. I'm gonna turn it towards me so you guys can get an idea of what the user would hear. This device seems to overcome all issues that I had with the previous generation Intel's. This 11900H CPU, the eight core that it's got inside, runs cool, it runs fast, it runs perfect for what a user would need. To answer the statement that I had in the beginning of this video, is there anything I don't like about it? Not really. I am trying to find negatives. Um, I love this thing so much, I can't stand it. So yeah. This is the Asus Zephyrus M16, and unfortunately, I gosh darn love it. Ooh, oh my god. You know what? I just thought of something I don't like. The rubber, the rubbery little, little rubber pad. It makes finger marks. Yep. Humans have oily hands, and when I touch it, it makes an oil mark. Unbuyable, unusable, unplayable. Um, no, like for real though, it actually does uh, wipe off pretty easy, unfortunately. Like I, I want to find a fault. I like, I want to find something that is wrong with this device and I cannot find it. I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did enjoy this review, if this is the first time you're at my channel, please understand that I don't actually do reviews. This is like totally new for me. If you did enjoy some of the reviews, please uh, you know, leave a comment. Tell me if I'm doing a good job. Tell me if I'm doing a bad job and hopefully I can improve because I would I literally just spat everywhere. Ew, I spat everywhere. I just spat on the laptop. Guess what, bitch? <laughs> Coronavirus! I would love to grow into this kind of field and sort of do something like this more full time. So if you have any suggestions or any complaints, please comment below. Thumbs up if you liked it. 
thumbs down if you didn't like it. Subscribe if you have a big... Dictionary.com describes the word perfect as excellent or complete beyond practical or theoretical improvement. I don't know about that, but the Zephyrus M16 sure is pretty close. To my darling patrons, thank you for your outstanding support. To my regulars, thank you for hanging around too. And if you're new to the channel, thank you for your time. I'll catch you next time. And as always, blackout.